Hello my fellow working class heroes, good day. I am Carlo and welcome to Carlo Excels. These are the objectives of this episode. Today we're gonna discuss how to calculate for dense ranking in Microsoft Excel. But before we do that, we first have to understand the common types of ranking. First of all, during the previous lesson, we talked about the rank function. Now, if you haven't seen that uh, particular lesson yet, or if you don't know how to do the rank function, please refer to the descriptions down below in this YouTube video so that you can find a link to our lesson on the rank function. So let's proceed with the common types of ranking. So on the screen right now, you will find a uh, chart that shows uh, grades of students. And then let's compare the different types of ranking and what kind of data they provide. First of all, we have what we know as standard competition ranking. So you will see here the first placer which has a grade of 90 is number 1, 89 is number 2. For 88s, uh, you will notice that these uh, these two 88s are a tie for third place. So you have two third places here. As for the next place, 87, you will notice that you have essentially skipped one rank because uh, this will be the fifth place because there are four places on uh, above it even if the third placers are a tie. So you have here the sixth place, uh, you have three sixth places, so uh, over here, and then you have the ninth place, which is next. Once again, because there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight places above it. So that is standard competition ranking. Next, we have dense ranking, just like what you can see on the screen. As far as dense ranking is concerned, in competition ranking, you're essentially ranking the people who got these grades. But in dense ranking, you're not ranking the people. You're in fact ranking the grades, not the people behind them. So you'll see here, dense ranking, uh, 90 is the first place. 89 is the second place. And for 88, this is the third place grade. So you have three, uh, you have two third placers here, uh, over here. But when it comes to 87, you have fourth place. So you'll notice that you have not skipped a rank. You have not skipped a place. For uh, for the 86s, which are rank, you have three 86s here, and they're rank fifth for dense ranking. And then the last value here is rank sixth. So for dense ranking, you do not skip a value. And once again, the primary difference between competition ranking and dense ranking is competition ranking, you're actually ranking the people behind the grades or the people behind the values. In dense ranking, you are ranking the numbers or the values themselves. Next, we have what we know as fractional ranking. In fractional ranking, you will see immediately that fractional ranking can involve fractions or can involve decimals. So for the first placer, you still have number one. For the second placer, you still have number two. The way that fractional ranking deals with ties is this. You take the third place and the fourth place, so that's three and four, and then you add the two of them, three plus four, and then you divide it by the number of ties. So in this case, you have three plus four. This is the third place, this is the third value, and this is the fourth value. So you have three plus four is equal to seven, and because there are two grades that have this particular value, seven divided by two, that's why you get 3.5 here. This is still fifth place, 87. The next grade is still fifth place because it has no tie. Now, you'll see here, 86, there are three 86s. So, this is the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spot, the 7th spot, and the 8th spot. So, 6 plus 7 plus 8, that is 21. So, 6 plus 7 plus 8, that's 21, divided by the number of uh, people or the number of grades in this place. So, you have 21 divided by 3. That is why these three grades have a fractional ranking of 7, all of them. And then the next place is 9 because, again, the last place does not have uh, does not have a tie. Next, we have unique ranking. Unique ranking, by the way, still arranges grades and values uh, from either uh, most to least or least to most. The only difference with the unique ranking is the way it deals with ties. The way it deals with ties is it still assigns a unique number for the ties and just assigns this in whatever order the user uh, the user chooses. So you will see here 90 is still 1, 89 is still 2, but for 88s, even though these, uh, these two values are supposed to be a tie, unique ranking will still assign this a unique value 3 and 4. 87, no tie, 5. 86, you have three ties here, 86. But you will still assign a unique value here, 6, 7, and 8. And of course, 85 is ninth place. In Microsoft Excel, when you do the standard uh, rank function, what you get is the competition ranking. However, Microsoft Excel does not have an easy way to do dense ranking. 
uh, unlike other, unfortunately, other programming languages which have dense ranking, Microsoft Excel does not have it. So it will require a bit of uh, function manipulation or arithmetic calculation. As for fractional ranking, Microsoft Excel does have a function for fractional ranking. However, fractional ranking only uh, on, is only present in uh, Microsoft Excel versions 2010 and above. If you are using Microsoft Excel 2007, you will have to perform some uh, arithmetic to get fractional ranking. And for unique ranking, Microsoft Excel once again does not have a special function for unique ranking. You're going to have to uh, use the COUNTIF function in conjunction with the rank function to achieve unique ranking. Now, I know you clicked on this video because you wanted to learn about dense ranking, but if in case you are interested in fractional ranking and unique ranking, please subscribe to the channel because those are actually future lessons on this channel. Subscribe to the channel so that you will not miss those lessons when they come. Right, so let's start with dense ranking and how to get it. Now, you will see on my screen right now, you have here uh, the fictional names of students and then you have here their grades. Now, uh, there are 200 students uh, over here on my screen right now. So before we proceed, let me clarify. For the purpose of illustration, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-arrange all of the grades that you see on the screen right now. But even if uh, I'm going to pre-arrange them, the methods I'm going to teach you will still work even if the grades are not pre-arranged. Just so you know, I'm just really doing the pre-arranging so that the effects of the functions or the methods I am going to teach you is much easier or much clearer to see. So on my screen right now, you have here once again the fictional names of students and their grades. But in this case, uh, the grades have now been pre-arranged. So they are now in order of uh, their grades from highest to lowest. And uh, just so we can see the effects of dense ranking much clearer later, I color-coded the ties so that it's much easier for for your eye to see the ties. So let's do a quick review of the rank function. So I'm gonna copy this label here and then let's label it as C rank or in other words competition ranking. So crank. So uh, we're going to perform the rank function here. So once again calling out the function name rank and then this is the number we're going to rank. This these rather are the numbers we're going to use as reference for the rank and we want to use it I uh, we want to uh, rank them in descending order, meaning highest grade to lowest grade. And I'm gonna put an absolute reference like so. And then you have here your uh, competition ranking. So we're gonna copy that function, or paste it all the way down here, and you will see competition ranking for these students. So how do we achieve dense ranking? First, let's try to analyze what competition ranking or the rank function actually does. You will notice, of course, that with the rank function, you're asking Microsoft Excel to rank this grade, uh, in this case 92, cell B2, you're asking Microsoft Excel to rank this grade, and you're asking Microsoft Excel to use this column as a basis. But for us to achieve dense ranking, what we can actually do is we can ask Microsoft Excel to rank this grade, but we can use another column as a basis for ranking. That column, what we can do with that column is we can remove all of the duplicates. And if we do that, we can achieve dense ranking. So how do we achieve uh, the removal of duplicates? Well, there are two ways to do this. You can either do it the manual way or you can do it the function or the automatic way. So if you're going to rank all of these grades just once and you want the data to uh, appear just once, you can do it the manual way. So how do we do the manual method of removing duplicates? So first, let's copy all of these grades. Uh, I'm gonna create another column and I'm going to just label this X right here. And then we're going to copy all of these grades and then we're going to paste it here so that we have a duplicate of the grades. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight these grades again. We're going to highlight the duplicates and then we're going to proceed to the removal of duplicates. So you will see here uh, on the upper part of the screen, uh, you have here our ribbon, then you have here our tabs. So uh, I'm going to proceed to the data tab, just like what you can see here. And I'm going to find the button which says remove duplicates, just like what you can see here. So I'm going to click on remove duplicates. And well, if it asks me, uh, do you want to expand the selection? I don't need to expand the selection in this case. So I just want to continue with the current selection and then press remove duplicates. Once I press that button and then press OK on the next uh, dialog box, you will now see that 176 duplicates have been removed. 
So if I scroll down, you will now see that these values are unique and all duplicates of those values have been removed. So then let's uh, proceed to creating the dense ranking. So I am going to copy this and then paste that here. And then I'm going to label this D rank for dense rank, just like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to perform the rank function again, rank, and I'm going to rank this number. But instead of using this column as a basis for ranking, I'm going to use the one with the unique uh, values over here. So I'm going to do uh, ranking using this as a criteria and I want to uh, rank it again in ascending or rather descending order. Of course, put their absolute reference there, press enter. And then what you will see now here, this is now dense ranking. If I copy this formula and paste it all the way down here, you will now see that I have achieved dense ranking. So let's check our dense ranking. 98 has a uh, place of 1, rank of 1. 97s have a rank of 2. 96s have a rank of 3, just like what dense ranking is supposed to be. But what if you want to remove duplicates uh, using a function? You want it done automatically because you're creating a template and you want to. Uh, you don't want to have to do it manually every time the values change. Well, you can remove duplicates by using a combination of the if function and the countif function. So before we continue, if you do not yet know how to use the if function and the countif function, I have a very comprehensive guide or lesson on how to use both the if function and the countif function. You will find the links to the videos, uh, to those particular videos down below. So please watch those videos so that we can proceed with the next part of this lesson. Now, assuming that you already know how to use the if function and the countif function, let's proceed with removal of duplicates using those functions. Well, first of all, let me explain how the formulas work so that uh, you will learn from it. And it's actually much easier for me to simply give the formula, but you may not learn if I simply give the formula. So first, let's explain how the formula I'm going to show works. Now, we first have to check when the duplicates happen. We can use the count if function for this. So let's do a count if function. So count if, and then what is the range going to be? First of all, the criteria is we want the criteria to be this cell over here. We want Microsoft Excel to count how many 98s are occurring in this particular column, all right? But uh, this is going to be the criteria, so I'm going to start with the criteria. As far as the range is concerned, you don't really want Microsoft Excel to count all of the columns simultaneously. You only want Microsoft Excel to actually count the, col uh, the, the, the cells above it. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use cell B2 as the beginning of the range and I'm going to also use B2 as the end of the range. And then I'm going to use absolute referencing on the first occurrence of cell uh, B2. So you'll see here, count if $B$2 to B2. And then you're going to count the number of B2s. And then you press enter. So you will see that the result is 1. And why is it 1? Well, essentially, you're asking Microsoft Excel, uh, count the number of 98s in this particular cell. So, well, there is one 98 in this particular cell. So therefore, the answer is 1. However, because of how we set the absolute uh, reference, if we copy paste, if we copy this and paste it downwards, you will see something uh, strange happening to the formula. When you copy it one cell down, because of how you set the absolute reference, B3, in this case, uh, in, the, in, in the case of the formula, B3 has adjusted because it is a relative reference. This B3 has also adjusted, but because this is an absolute reference, uh, this has not adjusted. So what you're essentially Microsoft, asking Microsoft Excel to do is, in this particular cell, cell D3, how many 98s are in these two cells? In cell D4, how many 98s are in these three cells? In cell D5, how many 98s are in these four cells? In cell D6, how many 98s are in these five cells? Etc, etc. In fact, you can see this effect if you continue to copy this and paste it all the way down here. So you will notice that uh, because of what we did, uh, this value becomes one only if or only during the first occurrence of a unique value. So you have here 98. This is the first time that 98 has happened so far. If you look at the list downwards, this is the first time that 98 has occurred. So that uh, you have here one. 
this is the first occurrence of 97 so you have here one the first occurrence of 96 so you have here one etc etc so what you essentially want to do is you want to spot only the first occurrence of a particular value and you're going to use an if function to only to, to make sure that only that particular occurrence appears in this list so let's use the if function for that so let's call out the if function so i'm gonna write on this particular uh in this particular formula if if this value, if this uh, value that we've already derived, if this is equal to 1, meaning if this is the first occurrence of 98, if this is the first occurrence of this value, you want this cell to display this particular value. And uh, calling out what's going to happen if it's false, if that is not the first occurrence of that particular value, you want this cell to simply uh, state a text blank like this. Double quotation mark is a text blank. So we close the parenthesis and then we press enter. So next what we're gonna do is we're going to copy that particular uh, we're going to copy that particular uh, formula, paste it all the way down here and then you will know uh, you will notice the effect of the formula that we did. So you will see now what happened is the the value only appears during the first occurrence of that particular value so you only have 198 and then you have blanks over here because of course 98 has already appeared as far as this list is concerned 97 only appears once 96 only appears once, 95 only appears once etc etc and now because this column is full of unique values what we can then do is we can use uh, these unique values as a basis for our ranking and then we achieve dense ranking so now let's do dense ranking just like what we did a while ago so we use the rank function rank and then we use this number as a basis here that we ask microsoft excel to rank this number rather and then we're going to ask microsoft excel to use this particular column as our basis and then in do it in ascending or rather descending order and then of course we want to do our absolute reference because we plan to copy paste this particular formula later and then press enter so we have here our ranking Control c copy that paste it all the way down here and then we have now achieved dense ranking using functions to eliminate uh, duplicates so once again just like what i mentioned a while ago even though the grades in this particular uh in this particular example are pre-arranged the formulas i showed you will still work even if the grades are not pre-arranged in fact as a proof of concept i'm going to remove uh the coloring i'm going to remove the fill and i'm going to arrange all of these names alphabetically and when i arrange them alphabetically you will see that the function that we used the function that we use to remove duplicates will still work properly and therefore dense ranking will still work properly. So this is how we achieve dense ranking in Microsoft Excel. But before I continue, please take note that there are other methods or there are other ways of achieving dense ranking without having to use an extra column as a basis, without having to use helper cells. But uh, even if there are other methods of doing it, I choose to teach this particular method because first of all, it's easy to understand and because it's easy to understand, it's easier to remember and there's no harm in using an extra column anyway, especially if you can just move it somewhere that is not going to pr be printed or you can simply just hide it. And if you are interested on how to get fractional ranking and unique ranking in Microsoft Excel, those are actually our next lessons on this channel. So once again, please subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss those lessons when they come. So that's it for our lesson on dense ranking. I hope I earned your subscription today. Once again, I am Carlo and this is Carlo Excels. Thank you very much for watching.